for guideline one, interaction and collaboration, student engagement and community building, um, I use a shaping up framework for the form assignments. So students will click on it in the module and it goes to um, this framework which I developed based off of higher ed teaching strategies from Magna Publications um, faculty focus. So it uses a nonlinear format and it asks students to record what they're thinking about course content as well as how they're thinking about it. So the three shapes are associated with um, three concepts. So something that squares with my beliefs, three points to remember, and a question circling in my mind. So I found that um, I'm able to use this for formative assessment. I can get a quick glimpse of how students are processing the material, what questions they might have, both of which inform my teaching. Um, also, the student framework is expected to meet the criteria, which are cognitive and logical component. That's the three points to remember. Uh, personal effective component, which is um, something that uh, they relate to or something that squares with their beliefs and then finally a question that's circling in their mind so that um, lets me think about what their personalities and interests are as well as things that they're unsure about. For guideline two, interaction, collaboration, communication, um, in addition to having my announcements and mail tool and UH Gmail and um, personal cell and office hours. I use a strategy called the jigsaw um, as one of the assignments for uh, the readings that they do. So there's actually, I use a learning styles choice board. So every week that they have an assignment, they get to choose how they're going to respond to the reading material. So the jigsaw strategy is considered one of the auditory choices, one of the different learning styles that they're able to use. So what they do, um, it's this corner right here, is they'll discuss a section of the chapter with a classmate using either Skype, FaceTime, or calling one another before the week begins. Um, they decide which section they're going to read and they divide the chapter amongst one another. Um, and then as a group, they create one Google Doc which has bullet points. So uh, the tutorial that I give for this explains how one student will um, take the notes while the other person is covering their section of the chapter and then they go down the list like that. So everybody is active um, actively participating in the jigsaw and then there's an attached rubric for all of the tasks so uh, I don't know. and it's they're really simple just what the criteria are and how many points are assigned for each one for guideline three learning activities and strategies um, I wanted to review my choice board so for each week that they have a reading assignment due. Um, the module will have a link to the choice board. And then I'm just gonna highlight a couple of the strategies because there's actually nine um, that they go over. But So the reader's response is one um, of the written learning styles. And I like this one because it has oops, additional prompts that they can use. So these are sentence starters. This is taken from Marshall Wolf at the Institute for Literacy Studies and they're all higher order thinking skills. So um, how they connect to the reading is just very personal. And then another example is just, this is used all the way down to primary school, but it works as well for a college level. The KWL chart, so upon reading something, um, what you already know about the topic, what you wonder about the topic, so questions you might have about it, and then after reading, um, what you learn. So it, it uses that pre, during, and post reading strategy. And then finally, the interview one, which is the one a lot of students have been doing and chose for the auditory column. So that's this column right here. They interview either a family uh, member, personnel, friend, anybody uh, on a topic that was addressed in the chapter or the reading. And they either record it and create a YouTube or they do a written transcription. Most have opted for the YouTube, which is really nice because then they have it, um, they can share it as well. And then they do a reflection on their interview. And all the tasks have a, a rubric assigned to them as well. For guideline four, learning outcomes and assessments, I will cover the rubrics um, that I use for the learning choice board activities. Um, one of the written examples here 
It's written, uh, um, it's written out in a checklist format rather than those rubrics that have like the different columns of meeting proficiency and below proficiency because I want students to complete the entire task um, and not just do what they think is the bare minimum. So that's one of the written tasks, one of the visual tasks. Everything is quantified so it's very clear on what the expectations are. And then an example of an auditory task. So like I said, more of a checklist and a completion type thing than a rubric, which makes it really simple. And then all of the um, rubrics are linked to my course SLOs. So I'll just look, link to my syllabus real quickly. The font is showing up funny for this, but I'll just go ahead and show you the course SLOs are all listed here. It's not in the right font for, but that's all right. And then these are the assignments, the schedule, and the grading criteria. For guideline five, learner support, uh, I was going to cover the section in my syllabus that goes over um, learner support. So I have a brief kind of box that just covers the Learning Resource Center, Writing Center, and the links to those and the phone numbers, and the mandatory students with disability statement, as well as our power mentor services that we have for the education department. Um, but the course policies are outlined more in depth with hyperlinks to different Google Docs, so professionalism. Questions about turning things in on time, incompletes, um, also professionalism uh, regarding attendance and dispositions. Support services are outlined in more detail with this hyperlink. And then um, there's statements on plagiarism, portfolio creation, and community building. Mm -hmm.